In real time applications, the input data sequence is very long. It is not possible to do the calculation for such a long data sequence. This is because the digital computer has limited memory. In practical application, we often come across such a linear filtering for a long data sequence. But as previously discussed that the DFT involves the operation on the block of data. So here the block size of data, it should be minimum because the digital processor have the limited memory. So now how to process the long data sequence? So in such a case, for a long data input sequences, it is broken into small length of sequences, which we call it as a blocks. The computation of each block is done separately. And then all processed blocks are fitted one after another to get the final output. In this technique, we are having basically two methods. The first one is overlap save method and second one is the overlap add method. Let us see what is overlap save method. In this step, suppose we are having a filter of a response h of n and we have to determine its length. So m it indicates the length of the impulse response of a filter. Similarly from this value of m we have to determine the number m minus 1. Secondly whatever input given sequence is there we have to take it and we have to determine the size of DFT and IDFT. It should be denoted by the capital N. You can have N is equal to 4 or N is equal to 8. Finally, whatever input data sequence is there, we have to make its block. So we have to make its length of capital L. So to determine the length of the block, we can use here this formula that is n is equal to l plus m minus 1. So here l that is the length of block, m that is the length of the impulse response and by using this value we can determine the length of the block. In next step we have to add l minus 1 zeros to the sequence of the filter response. So this is the impulse response of the filter and we have to add the L minus 1 zeros to this sequence of the impulse response. In next, in next step, whatever the input data is there, for that data we have to make the blocks of size L. That is, all the blocks should have the L number of samples or we can say that it should its length of the blocks it should be L. So here we are making the first block of this input data sequence let us denote it by the x1 of n and we have to pad m minus 1 zeros before that. Here this m minus 0 we are adding because here uh, we don't have any previous samples over there. So in such a case we have to add zeros for the first block of sequence only. But when we are forming the second block at that time we have to add m minus 1 previous samples of the previous blocks. Similarly for the third block again we are taking the samples from this input data sequence and m minus 1 samples of the previous data sequence and likewise we have to form different blocks of this input data sequence. Let us denote these different blocks as x1 of n, x2 of n, x3 of n and x1, x4 of n. In next step we have to make the circular convolution between these blocks and the impulse response. That is we have to form the circular convolution between this input data blocks with the impulse responses and we are forming here the output data sequence y1 of n, y2 of n and y3 of n. In next step whatever the circularly convoluted outputs are there out of these blocks the first blocks 
that is m minus 1 blocks we have to discard over here so this much blocks uh, this much samples we have to discard from the y minus 1 similarly from the y minus 2 we have to discard the m minus 1 previous samples likewise we have to also discard the m minus 1 sample from the this previous or previous numbers similarly from the y4 of n we have to discard m minus 1 samples over here and after that whatever the remaining samples are there we are just adding over here to get the output data sequence let us see one simple example to determine the overlap and save method to filter a long data sequence suppose the impulse response given over here that is h of n is equal to 1 2 3 it indicates that it is uh, having total 3 samples we can say that its length is equal to 3 so here the term m is equal to 3 so from m minus 1 that will be equal to Now let us take the input data sequence here this is the input data sequence it is uh, having this much samples over here so for the overlap and save method let us consider the size of dft or the idft that is n is equal to 4 you can have n is equal to 8 or any more now let us determine the length of this block so to determine the length of block that we have to make from the input data sequence here we are using this equation so from this equation we calculated that l is equal to 2 so in the next step we have to make the blocks of the input data sequence so here this n that indicates the different samples and here x of n that is the actual input data sequence over here so it is indicating that we are having total 12 number of samples for the x1 of n now we have to make the blocks of this x of n so let us see how to determine the first block of this x of n so here we are taking the l minus uh, sorry we, are, we have to take the l samples from this input data sequence that is we are taking the two samples from this input data sequence and remaining m minus 1 sa samples we have to add it from the previous block so as x of x1 of n that is the first block so it is not having any previous block over here so that's why we are adding 0 0 in this in this block over here let us see how to construct the second block in the second block as stated we have to take the l samples from this x of n x of xn so here we are taking minus 1 and 2 over here and the two samples from the previous block so we are taking 1 and 2 so this 1 and 2 that are nothing but the samples of this previous blocks x1 of n so here we are taking as it is similarly to form the third block here we have to take the two samples from the input data sequence that is 3 and minus 2 and the two data sequences or the two samples from the previous block that is the x2 of n so we are taking 1 and uh, minus 1 and 2 similarly we can go for the x4 of n here also we are taking the two samples minus 3 and minus 1 from the input data sequence x of n and two samples from the previous block that is the two samples from this x3 of n we are taking as it is that is the 3 and minus 2 we are getting over here and finally we are forming this data block x4 of n similarly we can go for the x5 of n in x5 of n we are taking this previous two samples from the previous block minus 3 and minus 1 and the two samples from the input sequence and the two similarly we are going for the xc x6 of n and x7 of n so we are forming these different data blocks in next step we have to perform the circular convolution so before that whatever the impulse response is there we have to add l minus 1 0 to that so here this is the impulse response and we have to perform the circular convolution of y1 of n that is equal to 
x1 of n circularly convolution with the h of n. So, in the previous studies, we have seen how to perform the circular convolution between the x of x1 of n and h1 of n. So, x1 of n that is here one vector over here and the h of n that is one matrix of 4 by 4 size. So, these are the samples 1, 2, 3, 0. So, to get the next column of this matrix, this 0 we have to keep at the first row over here. Then second, uh, second sample it has to be copied like this way. Like this we are getting the second column. In the third column, the last element of the second column, we have to keep it as a first element of the third column. And next, we have to follow these samples as it is. So, in this way, we are forming this matrix. Further procedure is to multiply these two matrices. So, after multiplication, you are getting this output over there. Similarly, you can go for the y2 of n. Here, you have to do the circular convolution between the x2 of n and h of n. Let us go for the y3 of n. Same procedure we have to follow for the multiplication of the two matrices and to get the y3 of n. Same we are going for the y4 of n, y5 of n, y6 of n and y7 of n. After that, whatever circularly convoluted output signals we are getting, that is the y1 of n, y2 of n, y3 of n, we have to represent in this manner. And here, the m minus 1 samples of each of this output block we have to discard. So, this 7, 6 we are discarding, 2, 10 of this second output block we are discarding, similarly 4, 5 we are discarding and likewise all the first two samples of each output block we are discarding and remaining all samples we are just writing over here. So, in this way we are getting y of n which is nothing but here the digital filtering of the two data sequences where the one data sequence is of a long length. So, this is about the overlap and save method.